Hi, this is Phil Chandler. While I had the camera set up for a longer video, I thought I'd just do a quick one on some of the uses of beeswax, because that's something I haven't really talked about on video before, and it must be of interest to, I hope, some people at least. Um, so just to start with, here is a lump of uh, pure beeswax, as pure as I, I can make it anyway. It's been filtered several times, remelted, and comes out a nice, uh, nice uh, amber yellow color. And how do you know this is pure beeswax? Well, there's a simple test that you can do. So if somebody hands you something and said, oh, this is pure beeswax, you can test it very quickly yourself. And this is what you do. You get your thumbnail and you run it over the surface of the wax. And you'll find, you should find, if it's pure beeswax, it kind of judders like that. You can't, you can't take a, a clean sweep of the beeswax with your thumbnail easily wants to skip over the surface slightly okay now, this is somewhat temperature sensitive if the beeswax is close to its melting point or, or it's been softened in some way this might not work so well but if it at room temperatures and it's about I would say about 23 three degrees outdoors right now um, your thumbnail skips over the surface and you can be pretty sure that that's pure beeswax you can also smell it very clear smell so what I've got here is some, I'm just going to tip the camera down, I've got here some other samples which I've prepared earlier and what I've done is I've made three dilutions with uh, mineral oil, otherwise known as, uh, at least in the UK, Johnson's baby oil. This is a mineral oil um, sold as baby oil. I've never really personally understood why you need to oil babies I and mean, it's not like they squeak when you move or anything like that but anyway um, it's, ba it's called by baby oil in this uh, in, in this country I, I think it may may be just called mineral oil in the States I'm not sure elsewhere who knows but this is um, a really useful oil to use alongside beeswax and I'll show you why oh, sorry this oak tree above me is dropping uh, leaves slightly at the moment so this this lump of uh, wax here this looks uh, you know on the surface this looks just like beeswax pretty much like pure beeswax but in fact if you run your thumb over it you see you, you can make a very easy nice smooth peel of beeswax comes off it so that shows it's not pure beeswax well I know that because this is actually two parts beeswax to one part mineral oil and uh, that makes a how should we put it? It's a kind of greasy surface. Pure beeswax has a, um, a cool, well, this sort of temperature is a kind of cool, smooth surface, and you can feel that, you know, it's firm, it doesn't give way under pressure. Um, this stuff, this is, this is two parts wax, one part oil. If you really pr push on it, you can make a bit of a dent in it. It makes that very smooth peel with your thumbnail. So we know that's not pure wax. Now there's uses for this. Um, not exactly sure what I would use this for. Possibly I, I might be tempted to rub this on, say, bridal leather or something like that if I wanted to give it a nice coat. I tell you what I would use it for is in archery on my bowstrings. Uh, I would use this, this grade of wax um, because the pure beeswax uh, doesn't blend into the bowstring terribly well. This is actually much better. So that's what that's two parts wax, one part oil. This next one is 50-50, so it's the same amount of wax to oil. And I've done it by weight, by the way. Uh, not that it makes any difference really, because um, beeswax is is a is a fat, and, and and so is the oil. So they're you know they're they're similar uh, chemically. So. Um, you don't, it doesn't matter if you do it by weight or by volume really, but this is done by weight. So this is equal parts wax and oil. Now this is much more kind of a soapy kind of texture and um, I would use this, I definitely would use this on tools uh, to rust proof them. So anything that's got maybe prone to, to getting a bit rusty, rub this on it. If it's made of steel obviously rub, rub this on it and uh, it will keep the rust at bay. Um, 
the, ne the next one I'm going to show you is actually one I use most mostly for, for that purpose. But this, this works very well. Now this again, if you run your thumbnail over it, it's going to make a really, you can really dig your thumb into this stuff and make a, a nice soft peel like that. Um, it's, it's nice stuff to handle. Um, it would probably make quite a good hand cream actually, but the, the next dilution is probably even better. Um, so this is 50-50. The next one is the opposite way around to the first one. This is twice as much oil as wax. Now if I could, I can stick my finger right into this. There we go. And withdraw a, a great gob of it. Um, this stuff is brilliant. It's um, for for use on the same purpose as the other one on tools. You put this on a on a on a, a rust piece of rusty steel, and it will actually um, virtually rust proof it from from. Uh, from the instant you apply it. It's amazing. Um, it's also probably good for your hands. I mean, I don't know whether it's got any kind of particularly um, beneficial uh, qualities, but it's it's really nice on your hands. If you've got, if you want to do something that involves um, maybe uh, slightly obnoxious chemicals and so forth, or if you're going to be, you know, doing some work that's a bit dirty and you want to kind of put a a layer of stuff on your hands first that would be great for that uh, it's also good for uh, wooden furniture you can just rub this on as a as a kind of waterproofing agent on wooden furniture although I think probably if you're going to use a if you're going to make a furniture polish you'd probably want to add something like um, a bit of carnival wax to it to give a, a kind of hard polished surface and it may be that this 5050 is better uh, to use on wood. Um, I find if, if I'm, I do a little bit of wood carving now and again and uh, if I rub um, one of the softer versions of this wax and oil mix on the wood it actually makes it easier to carve so that's maybe something else that might be useful for some people. Um, but this mixture here, this soft mixture is great for all sorts of things. It's a good lubricant for um, I don't know door hinges and things like that if for any way you would normally use grease, this would be a great uh, natural substitute for the for the grease. So there you go. There's a few uses for beeswax that you may not have thought about, and uh, a way of identifying pure beeswax just using your thumbnail. I hope that was useful. I'll see you in the next one.